Hi everyone, welcome back to All Access Arcade. Today, I'm going to show you how I pack all of my gaming gear, plus a few other things, into a Ryanair approved backpack. But first, I want to talk about what's in my bag. I'll leave links to all of my gear in the description. I started pretty light, with just my laptop. This was before I worked online or did much gaming on my laptop. Eventually, my setup evolved into what I'm going to show you today. My laptop is a 13.3 inch Lenovo Yoga 6. It's a few years old, but it does the job. It's a two-in-one laptop that can fold into a tablet and has a touch screen. I use it for everything from work to gaming to video editing. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte solid state hard drive, and an AMD Ryzen 5500 processor with an onboard graphics card. I'm able to run most programs and games without issue. A few years ago, I got a laptop stand, which was a game changer. When I first started working from home and was just using my laptop on a table, I got really bad neck pain every day. The stand has eliminated that problem, and I highly recommend one for anyone who uses their laptop on a daily basis. The stand I use has two sets of adjustable legs, so you can customize the height and angle. A recent addition to my travel gaming setup is a portable monitor. I have an Azorpa 14-inch slim monitor, and I absolutely love it. The model I have has a removable cover that doubles as a stand. New models don't have the cover and come with a separate stand instead. There are two USB-C ports and one mini HDMI port. I normally use this as a second monitor for my laptop. It doesn't require a separate power source when being used with a laptop. It works in portrait and landscape mode. I have a separate stand to hold the monitor when using it in portrait mode. It's also compatible with gaming consoles, which makes it perfect for when your Airbnb doesn't have a TV. Plug in your console and the power cable. All the necessary cables are included with the monitor. Turn it on and you're ready to go. The monitor also has built-in speakers. For a long time, I used whatever cheap combo mouse and keyboard set I could find. I always had trouble typing and gaming with these and eventually got sick of it. I recently upgraded to a gaming keyboard and I couldn't be happier. I use a wired TMKB 60%. It has adjustable feet for ergonomic use, and the USB-C cable is removable, which makes this keyboard easy to travel with. It has a blue backlight, and it's available with brown, blue, or red switches. One of the main reasons I selected this keyboard was because of the dedicated arrow keys. You can turn off the backlight with the function and backspace keys. You can change the light mode with the function and backslash keys. This keyboard has 19 different light modes. I am not demoing them all today. I also upgraded my mouse for the same reason I upgraded my keyboard. The cheap ones just weren't cutting it. Out of all my upgrades, the mouse has made the most noticeable difference. I have the Razer Orochi V2. It runs on a single AA or AAA battery. The USB dongle is housed inside the mouse next to the battery slots. It's incredibly lightweight and it's a great size for my hands and grip style. The connection options are USB or Bluetooth. Since this is easily the fanciest mouse I've ever owned, I also got a mouse pad to help protect the bottom from questionable surfaces during my travels. A machine washable mouse pad was a high priority for me. This one has tightly stitched edges so it doesn't come apart in the wash. The Switch has always been marketed as a travel-friendly device, and to this day I'm shocked that I don't see many people using them at the airport, on trains, or in other public places. I usually draw the interest of several onlookers when I pull my Switch out while traveling. Even though the Switch itself is travel-friendly, the dock is not. 
The dock is bulky and fragile, not the ideal combination for a frequent traveler. Instead of the standard switch dock, I use a portable dock that fits in my switch case. It has USB, HDMI, and USB-C connections, just like the regular dock. It plugs directly into the switch, and then you connect the HDMI cable and charger as normal. A traveling gamer is only as good as their luggage. A good backpack or suitcase can make or break a trip. I fly frequently, and airlines are very inconsistent with their allowed personal item sizing. So I chose a backpack that fits the size guidelines for a notoriously strict airline, Ryanair. Their allowable size for a free personal item is 40 centimeters by 25 centimeters by 20 centimeters. That's 15.7 by 9.8 by 7.8 inches. Let's take a look at my Ryanair approved backpack. A water bottle pocket is always a must have for me. It's a nice place to store long skinny items like laptop stands or tripods. There's also a small zippered pocket. The compression straps are great for overpackers, but also function as a safety mechanism since the bag can't be unzipped while they are in use. This bag has three compartments. The first compartment has smaller pockets for loose items and a mesh zippered area that takes up the whole front of the backpack. All the zippers on this bag are waterproof. This backpack is a clamshell style and opens fully like a suitcase. I find this easier to pack than a traditional backpack. Inside, there is another zippered mesh area. The main packing area is very roomy and has elastic straps to hold your gear securely in place. The back has a pass-through to put the bag on top of another suitcase. The final compartment has a few mesh pockets and a padded laptop pocket that fits up to a 14-inch laptop. When traveling, I normally pack all the gear I've shown, plus a few outfits and toiletries into this backpack. Today I'm packing one workout outfit, a makeup bag, a wallet, two outfits consisting of a t-shirt and a skirt, pajamas, a packing cube with socks and underwear, toiletries, a laptop stand, wireless earbuds, a laptop and charger, a switch and charger, a portable monitor with stand and cables, a mouse and mouse pad, wired earbuds, and a keyboard and cables. Let's get packing!
I always attach my switch case and wireless earbuds to the outside of my backpack for easy access. I've been doing this for years and it's never been a problem during travel. I also leave the switch in its case when I go through airport security and I've never been asked to remove it. If you'd like to know more about taking consoles through airport security, let me know. What are your must-pack gaming items for travel? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to know some of my top packing tips for traveling gamers, check out the latest post on the All Access Arcade blog. Happy gaming!